Welcome back to the On The Money YouTube page powered by Ally of Wealth. I'm Ryan Wheelis and today we're going to be talking about a very hot topic. It's one of my favorite actually and I call this segment Why Ken Fisher Hates Annuities. In fact, Ken Fisher had a, a commercial out not long ago that said he would rather burn in hell than sell someone an annuity. Well, Ken Fisher's a sharp guy. He's a good money man. He's done a lot of th good things for a lot of people. Um, but the question is, is Ken Fisher right and why does Ken Fisher hate annuities? Let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, a whiteboard presentation today. So bear with me from looking at the camera to looking at the whiteboard and trying to balance that. I'm not trying to have you guys watch my back the whole time. Um, but to that end, there is a very good reason why Ken Fisher hates annuities. And so we're going to talk about annuities today and the various types of them. We're going to start with the reason why Ken Fisher hates annuities. Here we go. All right, so what happens in this particular annuity is when you put your money into this annuity, it goes into this wrapper here, this annuity. The insurance company you put the money with goes out and buys mutual funds with your money, all right? And what they do is they guarantee your beneficiaries no less than what you put into this variable annuity contract. You go, well, wait a minute, what's, what's, that, what's all that means? Well, let's look at it. So let's say we put in $100,000. It's in the, in the account here. And remember, we're invested in mutual funds. So mutual funds fluctuate up or down based upon the stock market and the bond market and any other underlying investments that are in the mutual funds. So basically, you can lose money in mutual funds in a major market crash. So let's say you put your money in this variable annuity. And the first year you're in here, the market crashes and we have a repeat of 0809, and your account value drops 40%, and you've got $60,000 left in your account. All right? So you walk out to your mailbox, and you open up your statement, uh, and right there you see you've lost 40% of your life savings, and you dropped out of a heart attack right there. Not cool, all right? But the question I have for you folks is if that were to happen, what do your beneficiaries get? Remember, you're buying life insurance against potential market losses. So your beneficiaries are guaranteed to get no less than what you put in this variable annuity contract, regardless of what happens with the underlying mutual funds losing 40% in a down market. So your beneficiaries are going to get a $100,000 death benefit. All right. So that's interesting to me because you're basically paying for life insurance inside this variable annuity contract. And that life insurance is not free, folks. It comes in the form of something called an M and E fee. M and E does not stand for money and entertainment. It actually stands for mortality and expense. And it's a charge for life insurance. And those fees typically run around 1.25% per year. And I have seen them run higher. Next thing, you see this death benefit? We can add on a death benefit rider that says our death benefit is guaranteed to grow by some percentage, maybe 6% each year. So the worst case scenario from a death standpoint is that my beneficiary's death benefit is growing at some guaranteed rate. And that's called a death benefit enhancement rider. And that rider typically has a fee of anywhere from 0.5% to as high as 0.8%. So getting up there in fees already, as you can see, all right, well now let's keep going. Because you see these mutual funds here, right? Well, the way the mutual funds work is they're actually not called mutual funds inside of the variable annuity. They're called sub accounts. The sub accounts are basically mirrors of mutual funds. And I'm not picking on PIMCO, uh, a mutual fund company. They're a great company. I'm just using them as an example. So let's say that um, uh, this insurance company uh, who, who wants to put the PIMCO funds into its variable annuity contract in the form of a sub-account. Well, they, the insurance company calls PIMCO and says, Hey, PIMCO, we want to put your money inside our, our variable annuity contracts. And PIMCO says, No problem. We will give you the data feed on our funds, uh, but we want to give you the data feed on, um, uh, on the funds, and we're going to charge you a fee to do that. And maybe that fee is 0.5 basis points per year or, or, one, or half of 1% per year. And the insurance company says, cool, no problem. We'll pay that fee, no problem. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to mark that fund up and charge a higher price than PIMCO is charging us and charge that back to our policyholders 
or the people that own this variability contract. And those are called internal expenses on the sub accounts, and those average 1% or higher in some cases. All right, so folks, look, we're already on the low side here at 2.75, uh, excuse 1.25 for M&E, 0.5% for the death benefit enhancement rider, because you gotta have that, that death benefit enhancement on there. So that's 1.75, and then another 1% for the uh, sub-account expenses. So we're already at 2.75%, all right? Now, the next thing you can do is you can have what's called a guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit. Now, guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit works like this. Whatever the highest value your contract reaches, so let's say you start with $100,000, and then over a period of time, your contract reaches $500,000, and then plummets back down to, say, $250,000, just arbitrary numbers here. But what this means is they give you a distribution rate of, say, 5%, okay? And that means that you can take out a 5% distribution rate for the rest of your life off the highest value your contract ever reached. Okay? That's a called a guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit. So your contract reached an all-time high of $500,000. Now, you take the 5% distribution rate times $500,000, and that would give you a $25,000 per year guaranteed income paycheck for life. All right? Guess what, though? They charge you a fee for that, and that fee runs typically another 0.50% to 0.80%. All right? So we're getting up here in fees pretty quick. So now we're at two point, let's say do the math with 1.25 plus 0.5 for the death benefit rider. That's uh, 1.75. Then we've got the additional 1% for the mutual fund sub accounts. Now we're at 2.75. And if we add the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit rider, now we're at 3.25%. So we're already at 3.25%, folks. Couple of things that are important to understand. If you take this withdrawal benefit, Whatever the value of your account is, they begin deducting those withdrawals plus the fees out of your account, okay? Or they make you annuitize the money, meaning the remaining balance in your account is gone forever in exchange for uh, that $25,000 paycheck. Whether you annuitize or you go this route with just deduction from your account, you're out of money pretty fast here because the fees are so high, all right? The next thing I want to share with you is, is a dirty little secret that so many people don't know. If you buy a life insurance policy and your beneficiaries get a death benefit, that death benefit is payable and it's, it's tax free to your, your beneficiaries. It doesn't work that way in a variable annuity contract. The death benefit is 100% taxable to your beneficiaries. All right? so, you're starting to see here, look, wait a minute, you're telling Ryan that I'm paying 3.25% of your in fees to be in mutual funds. I'm taking the same risk inside this variable duty contract with the mutual funds that I will be taking outside of the variable duty contract. It's the same mutual funds, whether you're inside or outside. But you can own the mutual funds outside the variable duty contract for substantially less in fees that you're paying inside this program. The death benefit is very expensive. Um, most people who buy these did not buy it for the death benefit in the first place, and so many people don't even know that's even on there until they find out directly from the insurance company. And lastly, the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefits are nice, um, but the, the, the long-term uh, exit strategy is not there because you either have to give up your money on a permanent basis and never get uh, a, any money for your beneficiaries, or you uh, are out of money pretty fast because any residual balance, the fees drain down pretty fast too. So you're starting to see why Ken Fisher hates annuities. And I believe he's right because in this particular program, you can't do anything inside of this variable annuity that you can do outside for way cheaper, all right? So I happen to agree on this program, and I happen to agree with Ken Fisher on this. Um, and we're talking about a, a product here called a variable annuity, folks. But guess what? That doesn't mean all annuities are bad. There's a bunch of different annuities out there. And in part two of the video, we're going to go into more detail and talk about more why Ken Fisher hates annuities uh, and why uh, we're talking about the variable annuity contract. And when it comes to this particular program, I absolutely agree with Ken Fisher. I don't like this at all. And I believe that you can do everything outside of this that this thing can do for you for far less in cost and fees. Stay tuned for part two. We're getting into more annuities and more about why Ken Fisher hates annuities. I'm Ryan Wheelis. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Ally of Wealth on the Money YouTube page. Give us a like down below. Hit the subscribe button. We'll be, keep putting out great content for you in the future.